In this video, we're computing the derivative of the inverse cosine function or the arc cosine function. And anytime you're dealing with an inverse function, the way to get a handle on it is to start by giving it a name. So we're going to call this y, and we say that y is equal to the inverse cosine of x. You can also read that as the angle whose cosine is x. So if y is the angle whose cosine is x, we can turn this around and say the cosine of y is equal to x. Now what we're after here is an expression for dy dx. In other words, the first derivative of this inverse cosine function. So to get at that, we're going to take the derivative with respect to x on the left and right hand sides of this equation. And it's critical to realize that the cosine of y is actually a function composition here because y is a function of x, so I have the cosine of some other function of x. This means when we take the x derivative, we have to use the chain rule. So we start by finding the derivative of cosine y with respect to y, and that's negative sine y. And then we have to take the derivative of the interior function, so that's going to be dy dx, and that's actually what we're looking for in this problem. And then on the right side of the equation, we have the x derivative of x, which is just one. So next we're going to isolate dy dx because after all that's what we're looking for in this problem. So we divide by negative sine y and I end up with a negative one over the sine of y. Now remember y is the angle whose cosine is x so I can rewrite this as negative one over the sine of the angle whose cosine is x. Now whenever you find yourself having to evaluate a trig function of an inverse trig function it's going to be possible to express that as an algebraic expression in terms of x. And my favorite way to figure this out is by visualizing this angle, the angle whose cosine is x, in a right triangle. So I'm going to label this angle down here, and I'm going to say that's the angle whose cosine is x. In other words, the inverse cosine of x. Well, if it's the angle whose cosine is x, then the adjacent over hypotenuse must be x, and the simplest way to do that is to make the adjacent side x and the hypotenuse 1. Now we're left trying to figure out what the opposite side is because after all we have to compute the sine of this angle. And this can be just a guess and check process once you get used to it. I can guess and check real quick that it's actually the square root of 1 minus x squared. So the check on our work here is just the Pythagorean theorem. If I look at the sum of the squares of these two legs that's x squared for the square of the first leg and the square root of 1 minus x squared all squared for the square of the second leg. So I end up with an x squared plus 1 minus x squared. The x squareds cancel. And the sum of the squares of these two legs is equal to 1, which is indeed the square of the hypotenuse. So our guess was correct. So I encourage you to try that guess and check approach until you get really quick at this because these sorts of calculations do pop up a lot. But if you want an explicit algebraic method to get this done, you can just label the unknown side, and I'm going to do that just with the symbol question mark, and then we write down the Pythagorean theorem. So I have x squared plus question mark squared is equal to 1 squared. That means question mark squared is 1 minus x squared, and then I square root to solve for my question mark. And again, that's going to be a 1 minus x squared square rooted. So now that we know that opposite side, we're going to be able to find the sine of the angle whose cosine is x. The sine of this angle is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. Well, my opposite side is just square root 1 minus x squared, and the hypotenuse was 1, so that doesn't make a difference to our expression. And we've got the derivative of the inverse cosine function. If you enjoyed this video, or at least found it useful, Check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left, or click the Zach's Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zach's Lab, and best of luck on your math and physics journey.